All right, let us say hello to Josh Watson, who was a big star this past weekend at Knucklemania 3. Not only did he pick up his second consecutive finish, it wasn't just the finish. In a lot of people's eyes, they were very happy about the man that he finished. Knocks out Greg Hardy in the second round. My fellow New Englander, Josh Watson, getting it done. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. So obviously, that was a massive moment for you on Saturday. Everybody was talking about it. A lot of people felt like Greg Hardy was brought in to just kind of put you away and he'll move on to bigger and better things. He was the biggest betting favorite on the card. And then you just spoiled the party, man. How is, how has life changed since Friday night? Uh, my phone keeps dying because it won't stop going off the, you know, just notifications all day long. I have to continuously charge it and yeah, just, it's just been nonstop. Is it, has it been just, kind of overwhelming for you just getting all this attention um well the first few days are very overwhelming because i've never had to deal with something as big as this and i don't know i like to engage with fans and friends and i don't like just like taking all the comments and all the messages i try to respond to every single message i try to like every single comment i'm trying to you know keep everybody happy, you know, like that, because that's who I am as a person. And I don't want, I don't want to be, you know, too overwhelmed to be able to do that still. So I was kind of, I guess it was more on me trying to do it myself the whole time. How much has the following grown? How like, is it Instagram, Twitter? Like, have you gotten just a bunch um, more followers? Really Twitter. It's, um, I was actually with a friend and she was like, holy shit, you're trending on Twitter. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Probably. <laughs> um, my, uh, Instagram went from like, it's gone on. It's, well, I don't know what would be the term for it is, uh, tripled in size, um, for followers. Um, yeah. And Facebook, I've been at the, I've been playing that. I got to delete a few people to add a few people delete, you know, right at that 5,000 threshold for like over a year now. So that's no difference. Just a massive opportunity for you. How did you react to finding out that you were going to fight Greg Hardy? I was never really a big fan of him. Um, being, at the end of a career and like having already done the whole um, MMA thing. And then when you see somebody get an opportunity purely off of their name, it's really annoying. You know, like even when I was at my prime, even when I was at my heavyweight, not even at my prime, I never viewed Greg Hardy as a great MMA fighter. And I just kind of scoffed at the idea of like, like, man, this guy keeps getting these UFC chances because of his name. Then it sucks. Because there's people out there that are better than him. There's people that are there that work definitely harder than him. And it just gets the chance because of the name. And that's, you know, that's not how it should be. Uh, So I remember watching the contender series, cursing him. And I think I even went online, talked shit about him too. And, you know, like, it was funny because even after my, when I beat McElroy um, six months ago, I already had people commenting because Greg Hardy had already signed to fight. They just didn't have a date yet or opponent. I already had people saying, like, you should fight Greg Hardy next. So getting the opportunity, like, I had to jump on it. It was terrible timing, but whatever. Why was it terrible timing? Injuries, just busy with life. Um, But you know, put, put some shit on the back burner and deal with it. You know, just, you know, I'm actually, I got this, uh, this meeting, I got another phone call right afterwards. And I'm actually right next to the parking lot for the uh, doctor's office to go get some stuff checked out. So. Fair to say you made the right choice. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, you know, never said that. I, I never claim to say I make the best decisions in life, uh, especially when, it, especially when it comes to my health and taking care of myself. You know, um, I'll just do what should be done or what needs to be done and run with it. So fight week with Greg, and then obviously it builds up to 
the weigh-ins and you guys staring each other down. What was that moment like for you? Because obviously he's just a massive individual. You're no, you're no small man in your own right, but big, huge guy, biggest favorite on the card. You've had some things to say about him in the past and you got the chance to stare the man in the eyes. What was that like? You know, his size didn't really do anything for me. I've always been um, a bigger guy, but around bigger people. Um, even when I was doing security in Vegas, I'm a smaller person, always around guys that are three, four, 500 pounds, um, playing college football. I was very undersized on the offensive line. It's actually funny. My, some of my college roommates are out right now and one of them six, four, the other one's six, five. I'm just walking around feeling like a midget with these guys. Like it's just, I've always been surrounded by bigger guys. So his size and thing like that, that didn't bother me whatsoever. Um, when I came to the actual week of and all that stuff, I knew he was forgetting about me. I knew he wasn't looking at me. He wasn't, I wasn't even a blip on his radar. And I wanted to stay that way. You know, there's been some fun things happen at BKFC weigh-ins. Kind of wanted to join in on some of the fun, you know, maybe go viral with that. But I was like, you know what? Not that I don't want to piss him off to make him mad at me, but I don't want to piss him off to make him even think about me. I want to continue to be not a thought in his mind. I kept being super cordial. Like right before we walked up on there, we gave, we gave him a little dap, you know, like we kind of, we never really talked, but we were always super duper nice because I knew he wasn't going to, he wasn't thinking about me. So I just, I just fed into it more and more and more and let him keep going that way. And that was the biggest reason why, like, I came out swinging because that's not what I've done in my previous two fights. And again, he's not expecting me to be anything. So I was like, I'm just going to surprise the fuck out of him. Did everything? I mean, you obviously did because you cracked him right off the bat and you were landing some shots. You, you sent him backwards a little bit. Then it seemed like he started to settle in a little bit. He was throwing the jab, moving around a little bit. And it was almost like you were just waiting for your moment. And obviously the end of the first round, you, you stung him into the ropes. Most people feel who watched the fight that he was saved with the bell, another 30, 40 seconds left in the round. You probably put him out of there. So did everything with you flying under the radar, you landing the first shots, you starting the way that you did, did it go the way you sort of envisioned it in your mind? Well, um, in that time where you said he got settled in, um, he poked me in the eye. Like there's a good photo of it. That very first punch, he poked me. Like if you like kind of look over here. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if the video is. Yeah. I was basically blind in my right eye for the first minute of the fight. I didn't see shit. My left eye saw three of him and I was in a panic mode. Um, and I don't know, do you, have you ever done any training or anything of that nature? A little bit, but not a ton. When, when you're in that, when you're in that panic, your body is tight and you over exaggerate all your movements and it kind of exhausts you. It's how you um, blow your wad really early because you're just too tense. And that's what was happening. Like I got really, really, really tense because I was scared because I couldn't see shit. Uh, and then as the round went on, as I could see more, I kind of came down a little bit, started to relax. Um, when he threw me on the ground, I was like, all right, whatever. I'm going to take a few moments and just try to catch my breath. And then when I clinched with him, that was, and you know, I just did it again, just to catch my breath, get it going and was able to calm down a little bit. And that's when I caught him with that one hook. Um, it was just, I mean, it was fight or flight, you know, like in that first minute and a half, I was, you know, panicking because I couldn't see shit. And then after the first round ends, are you just feeling a ton of confidence? Yeah. So like you said, um, it, it saved him in a sense. Yes. Because when we still haven't figured out what hit cracked my head open, um, I drop him, Mergliata separates us. And all of a sudden, a big waterfall of blood cascades down my forehead. And I was like, shit, this is bad. This might get stopped. So right as he went down, my coach yelled 13 seconds. And I was like, shit, hurry up and get up so I can hit you one more time. Because in my mind, I was like, I might not get second round. And I was like, and it was funny because I was, uh, I talked to Mergliata in the airport the next day. 
And he knew it. He knew it from the cut. He saw it in my body language. He was like, I was trying to get it restarted as fast as we possibly can, but he was taking his time. But he saw it. I was trying to come in there just with something big to try to end it because I was afraid they weren't going to let me out of the second round or out of the first round. Yeah, as soon because I remember we were, it was me and another guy that were covering it, and we're like, wow, it looks hard. He was saved by the bell. And then as soon as you stood up, I'm like, oh, Jesus, they're going to stop the fight. And then they didn't, and they let you go back out there. I mean, how shocked were you that they let you go back out there? Because it stunned me. I thought for sure they were going to stop it, as apparently did you. Um, well, it's funny because there's been a lot of different views of it. Um, it seems as if like the doctor wanted to look at it and I blew him off. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't really remember it that way, but I definitely remember him being on the, um, the side of the ring. I clear as day. Remember my coach looking at him going, he's fine. He doesn't need to like, he, what he's like, he's fine. He can fight. And the doctor like looking at him, but, um, the last wipe that they did, they got Vaseline in my eye. I was cool. I was good. I was good. I stood up. I go, wait, now I can't see shit. Mergliata was like, what? Doctor was like, huh? And I'm like, no, like, wipe my eye. And he wiped it. I go, no, fucking wipe it. And he wiped it. I go, all right, cool. We're good. Let's go. And it was like funny because the way everybody saw how I was like, oh, okay, let's do this. It was almost like the... The ref, Mergliata wanted me to talk to the doctor. Doctor was up there, and it was almost like I got my eye wiped. I'm like, no, we're fighting. Let's go. And it just all went out the window. Like, like I didn't go see the doctor, even though it looked like Mergliata was turning me like, hey, you got to see the doctor because he was up on the apron. And I was like, nope, we're fighting. And it just went like that way. And I'm like, well, that might have been how it went. But uh, that wasn't the, like that wasn't the goal. I wasn't trying to blow anybody off. I wasn't trying to ignore the doctor. Wow. But, yeah, it was yeah. pretty that's wild but yeah everybody was like you just you just ignore the doctor and just said fuck it we're fighting but and I, then knew that the fight, <laughs> I, I knew the fight wasn't gonna last i, I wasn't gonna get out of the second round because he was gonna hit me a few more times and it was gonna get worse so i was like it had to be i had to finish it and you did you landed that big left hook the right hand behind it it was actually kind of hard to see it live like it just looked like one big shot but then when you saw the replay you saw like the left stunned him and then the right kind of pushed him and landed. And that was the one that actually put him down. And as soon as he went down, it just seemed like there's no chance they're going to let him continue on. The fight was going to be over. No, you must I, have I felt like it. the fight was done, right? Done. Like, so when he went down in the uh, first round, I was like, he's going to pop back up because I've been, you know, with the whole stay down Watson, I got stay down on my knuckles. It's been a thing where I've like, I need to have that pose over him with my knuckles first round he went down. I'm like, nah, he's going to get back up. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not wasting my chance. And then when he went down the second one, I'm like, he's done. This isn't happening. So I was like, fuck it. Put the knuckles up. Cause he's, he's staying down. He's not getting up. Incredible performance. What, what a moment. And then the reaction to it all was just unbelievable. And we talk about social media and everything. What was the reaction in the arena like? Cause it's, it's sometimes when you're listening to the broadcast, you can't hear everything, but did the arena just go bananas? Like, had you experienced yeah, everything every, like that? Everybody went nuts. Everybody went nuts. I mean, like everybody loves to see the underdog win, you know, that's, that's a bonus. Um, last time I was in Albuquerque, um, I beat one of their hometown guys and I still got a pretty good, um, response from a lot of people. Um, no, Albuquerque is like they're fight fans. Like they're they're not so much about the whole like well, Greg Hardy's supposed to win or the hometown guy's supposed to win. They they they're out there wanting to watch fights. So they really good response. Um you know, like as much as people were doubting me or me being the complete underdog everybody that like to my face and stuff like that like leading up to like you know everybody was like you got this you got this let's do it you know everybody you know made me believe more that i had it more you know more so than just my own thoughts so when he, it was so much i was actually surprised by how much of a um speed bump in the road I was supposed to be like organizationally. I mean, like I'm pretty sure that Greg Hardy was supposed to beat me and fight Ben Rothwell April 29th in Denver. Like that was like, 
the road and that's completely derailed now um so i don't know like you just it's funny how much they put in on him when there was nothing to put in. you know there's no there's nothing backing it did you talk to dave feldman after the win at all yes and what do totally. you, what do you, what do you um, say I don't know if you caught it. I don't know if you caught it, but um, after I like, there's an awesome picture of me reaching through the ropes, pointing at him, yelling, tell him I wanted a, a knockout of the night. And I got it, which is rad. Um, and then uh, he even said like that. He goes, no, I got, he goes, don't worry about that. I got bigger and better plans for you. Bigger fights. So, yeah. Maybe you and Ben Rothwell. That was what, and that's and that's what he yelled um, from outside the ring. And then um, again later on, um, when we were doing um, the uh, post fight press conferences, he kind of uh, alluded to a, another bigger fight sooner because uh, there's a few there's a few other uh, reporters from the East Coast. They all know him from Maine, and I've been trying. I want to fight in New England. I want to fight in New England so bad. I mean, sadly, I want to end my career in New England. Um, in front of you know, all my hometown friends, family. Um, and it was immediately asked, like, so we're going to get a Josh a fight back home? And he was like, no, no time soon. He's like, we got bigger plans for him. Something else coming up. So we'll see. Maybe, I mean, Josh versus Big Ben, you should get that fight now, right? You've already, they're, they're going to try to set up Greg for it. That should be you getting in there. I don't know if you'll be ready to bounce back in two months. Maybe you will, maybe not. But that's, I mean, right. It's, not, not as not a, not like I'm counting, but it's kind of like ten weeks out. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a massive. If you could knock off Greg Hardy and Ben Rothwell back to back, I mean, that's just massive, man. Like, where do you right, go? Uh, from there? I would have. I changed my nickname to Giant Slayer. <laughs> I mean, this has to be the biggest moment of your career, right? I mean, you've been in combat oh, sports for a while. By far. Yeah. By far, by far. You know, it sucks that it's happened, you know, when I'm 40 years old and it didn't happen 10 years ago that I could fully capitalize and build a career out of it rather than end a career on it. But whatever, it is what it is. Did you talk to Greg at all after the fight? And if so, what did you guys say to each other? Um, very brief um, interaction in the uh, cut room. He just shook my hand, called me a fucking savage, and that was about it. Very cool. So... Well, I and appreciate then, um, it. Yeah, that's so know, cool. He, he hasn't, he's only posted one post um, on on his Instagram, and I think it was yesterday, and he actually gave me a little shout out um, congratulating me, and he was, you know, I don't know, I mean, he's used to getting completely shit on with his, um, with his history. Uh, I don't think he goes on social media too much, because it's, it's always a negative experience for him. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a good sportsman. When it comes to that, you know, his outside stuff that he's done in the past, you know, aside, he's a good sport when it comes to everything. And, you know, he wasn't complaining. He didn't, he didn't talk shit. You know, he granted he did tuck his tail and run and leave the event midway through the Diego Sanchez trout fight. Cause he didn't want to stick around. He wasn't, he wasn't going to sit there and listen to people talk shit to him, I guess. And he just bounced. So to a degree, a good sportsman. Yeah. I mean, unless he was obligated to go to the presser. I don't know. If, oh, was he? Kind of. Kind okay. of, yeah. But it's, but it's Greg Hardy. Pretty much from what I understand is that most of the stuff that he was obligated to do, he just kind of was blowing off because of who he was. Fair enough. And then you showed up and did everything and you get to reap the benefits from this. And now you can't fly into the radar yeah, anymore. Right. Now you can't fly into the radar. You can't, <laughs> you can't sneak into right? anything anymore, right? <laughs> Right. Oh no, I couldn't sneak into shit before him. You see how I look? People <laughs> like I ain't robbing I can't rob banks or nothing like that. I'm very noticeable of who the hell I am. I mean it's I live in Las Vegas and I'm spotted out like really easily with people. So I mean that's I don't really live under the radar very much. Well, I meant in terms of like your like how people view you as a fighter going up against these big uh, yeah, names. Yeah. Gotcha. Greg, yeah, yeah. You felt like no. Greg overlooked you, right? Oh, hundred percent. He totally overlooked me. And I mean, I didn't even see it, but even somebody said uh, in like his pre-fight interview, they were asking about like how, if they, if he's yet to watch any of my video and he kind of like blew it off, like, yeah, yeah, he won. Like, not like, didn't like 
working a whole lot. He didn't uh, study anything. He just kind of was like, he probably just scrolled through, saw it, and was like, yeah, whatever. He's not going to do that to me and moved on with his day. So whatever. What a story, man. 40 years of age. Me too. I just turned 40 myself. So we, we're young men. We are young men. We are just getting started, Josh. But uh, congratulations. What a moment. I think you, you know, however you want to look at it, you are the hero of the weekend in a lot of people's eyes. A lot of people were uh, a lot of people rooting for you. A lot of people yeah, I've got the messages. Uh, the number one message I keep getting from everybody is I did God's work that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you expect in a fighting career to get a, a message like that ever? Not really. <laughs> but it's, it's funny, but whatever. It's funny. Well, there you go. Well, enjoy the victory. Cool. Uh, I hope your face is okay. I hope uh, there's nothing really. I know you're going to get checked out, but hopefully everything's good to go. And hopefully you get that Ben Rothwell fight and the Giant Slayer nickname could come to fruition, Josh. But congratulations yeah, on an yeah. incredible fight and uh, and enjoy it, man. You deserve it. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.